Okay, what is the next class you take after Algebra 1? Uh, so study geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me ask that in a clearer way. In the math coursework, what's the next class you take? Geometry. This is this is geometry right here. Did anybody look at this and realize what it is? It's area of a triangle. And this is where this abstract problem solving we've been doing yesterday and now today is related. It's why we do it. It's not just to train your brain to be abstract. But what if I told you that I knew that the area of a triangle was a number, and I gave you a number, and I knew that the height of the triangle was another number. Could you use this formula to find the base for me? Yeah. And that's why we're doing this. If you can convert this formula to be solving for the base, if I gave you the numbers that the area and the height were, you could tell me what the base is. Okay? There's a couple of ways to start this. My favorite way to start this is to start by multiplying by the reciprocal of one half. Because, as you guys know, I'm not that fond of fractions, and if I can get rid of them, I like to do that. So I'm going to start this whole thing by multiplying by 2 over 1. Now a question I've had on the right side is, don't I have to distribute the 2 to the 1 half, the b, and the h? I don't, because they're not separate terms, they're one big term. They're all being multiplied together right now. If this said 1 half plus base plus height, then we would have to distribute. But right now, I always think of a term as like things that are like stuck together like with a magnet, but the magnet is multiplication. So I'm just going to take 2 over 1 times 1 over 2, and that's going to give me an invisible 1. So the right side of my equation is just going to be base and height now. What am I going to have on the left side? Area. 2 times the area. area. So this is going to say 2a. I want to isolate the b. That's our goal. So I need to divide by the h. And that's my answer. 2a divided by the height is equal to the base. So if I told you that I had a triangle with the area of 24 and a height of 9, you could put 2 times 24 divided by 9 and tell me what the base is. Does that make sense? Some of you may have started it the other way, so I just want to show there are multiple ways of doing this. I like to get rid of fractions, as I'm very clear in telling you all the time, right? But what if that's not the way you started it? Some of you may have done this instead. If the area equals 1 half base times height, what if I divide by h? That's going to get rid of the h here. And now I have a over h is equal to 1 half b. Now I need to multiply by 2 over 1, the reciprocal. <laughs> 2 times a is going to be 2a. 1 times h is going to be h, h equals b. Same answer. It's just started two different ways. So, so can we just think of it as we're trying to move everything to one, to one side so we isolate the variable? Exactly. Okay, I don't know who asked for number 16, but did that work? Okay, number 19 was the next request. For number 19, I've got PV equals NRT for T. And people ask me, what if it's capital or lowercase? Does it really matter? Keep it however it is, but it doesn't matter. You treat it the same. In our first equation here, this was a capital A because it is for area. That is a formula, and it's always a capital A in that equation, right? 
I have no idea what this is. But we're going to keep the capitals capital and the lowercase lowercase. What are we solving for? T. I'm visual. I like to keep my eye on that target. That's what I'm trying to get by itself. Right now, what's with it? And, and, and how are they with it? Multiply. So to get rid of them, I need to divide. And I can do them both together because it's the same action. Over. And my answer is P of V over N R equals T. Is this clarifying for some people or validating that you were doing things the right way? Yep. That's what we want. Okay. Next request was number 14. Kaden, can you just let me know if I go off screen? I know I'm really blown up here. S is equal to 180N minus 360. Ah, really off screen. Let's try that. Okay. And remember, um, I said sometimes you're not yet calculating those numbers. Those numbers just are, right? So, oh, what did it say we're solving for? I'm going to guess the N, right? Yeah. No. It's yeah, it's for the N. I'm going to add that 360 first, right? And I get S plus 360 equals 180 N. What am I going to divide by? 180. Yep. And when I do that, I really, really wish I could divide that 360 by 180 because I know it would be 2, but I can't because the S can't be divided by the 180 and have any change. So honestly, that's the answer right there. It feels like we should do more, but we don't need to. Yep, you need to get the end by itself. Okay, 15 was next up. Good. 15 was x divided by 5 minus g equals a, and we're solving for x. And as soon as I see that, I'm so relieved because it's not the denominator. Remember our example yesterday? Yeah. Getting something out of that denominator that's what you're solving for means it changes sides. And we're not doing that, so that's nice. First thing I want to do is get rid of the thing on the side of the equal sign that's with the x that's not attached to it. So I'm going to add g. x divided by 5 equals a plus g. What do you guys want me to do next? Reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. I could have started with that, but it actually would have been more work because I would have had to distribute it up here. So on the left side, 5x divided by 5 is going to leave me x. And then I'm going to distribute this backwards, and I get 5a plus 5g or it could be left undistributed as x is equal to 5 times a plus g. Yeah? Can you go over, like, because, like, whenever you want to, like, multiply, you flip, you just, like, over there you did, um, 5 over 1. Can you, like, explain that? Well, because I did 5 over 1 here. But why is that? Because it's the reciprocal. This is not just x divided by 5, it's 1x one. One divided by 5, and the reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5 over 1. So when you want to multiply, you do that? When I want to clear a, a denominator, I do that. And I could have just written this as 5, because I'm ignoring the fact that there's a 1 down there, because everything is over 1, right? Dividing by 1 doesn't change anything. I just put it there because I put it here, and I like to keep it balanced to make sure I did things right. And to keep in the habit that if it's a reciprocal where it's not a one, like what if this was two fifths x? Then it would have been five over two, five over two, oh. right? It's more habit than anything else. Um, okay, 22 and 24 are what we're left to do. 
22 was very similar to one we did a few minutes ago. PV is equal to NRT, but this time we're solving for the R. And the R is in the middle here, but does it matter that it's in the middle? No. What property, those of you who remember seventh grade math properties on the back wall, tell us that it doesn't matter what order this is in? right? Actually, it's commutative. I could move those around. But right now, that R is being multiplied by N and T, and I want them gone. So I just divide by both of them at the same time. And that means my answer is PV over NT equals R. Okay. What is my last one? Don't. Put it on the desk. 24 was the last one you guys asked for. Five P plus nine C equals P, and we're solving for C. Nobody asked me to do this one last hour. It's a little bit different. We want this by itself. I see like terms. They're on the opposite side of the equal sign, though. Do you guys see them? Yeah. yeah. This five P needs to get over here because we want that C to get by itself. And now I have 9C is equal to what? Negative 4P. And then this 9C we want to have by itself, so we're going to do what? Divide by 9. I hate that this has a 9 and a P. It just looks like a Q or something now, right? Oh, come back, screen. Okay. Nine divided by nine? One. So we leave, are left with C equals negative four ninths C, or P. Sorry. Now it really looks like a weird letter. Okay, now let me see hands. Who's feeling better about this now that we've gone through them? And I want you to be honest with me. Who still feels like they need some practice, but it's beginning to be clear? Okay, I've got just eight problems for those of you who need a little bit more practice. Those of you who just want it because you like doing it, feel free, but I'm not collecting this. This is for those who are at the point saying, I think I'm about there, but I need to practice more to solidify it, okay? For those of you who just need a little bit more, Tomorrow, check with me, but tonight I want you to do on page 109, numbers 4 through 7, and 10 to 13. It's eight problems, and it's really hopefully to just get the rest of you to that, okay, I feel like I really do have this now point instead of the, I think I'm starting to get it. If we left you there with that, I think I'm starting to get it, you would panic a little bit if you saw this on a quiz later, right? So let's just get a little bit more practice, ask some questions tomorrow, and let's solidify it. <clears throat> questions for now. Kaden. Um, what are we doing 